This is Missing No, a popular glitch from the original Pokemon Red and Blue games, and it's mainly known for its glitchy appearance and strange effects in the game, such as duplicating items. And it didn't take long for players to figure out how to get this to appear consistently, with the most commonly known setup being watching the Old Man tutorial and then flying to Cinnabar Island and surfing along the coast. In fact, this glitch became so well known that Nintendo released an official statement regarding the matter stating that its appearance originates from a programming workaround which was used to omit certain Pokemon that were cut before the release of the final game. And yeah, if you weren't around at the time, this was a super big deal. Even myself was in elementary school and heard about this from a friend who then performed it on my car in order to give me infinite rare candies and basically turn me to the dark side. But this glitch had such a big impact that I decided to go through all the Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy Advance games and show you all the instances where we can get a missing card to appear. The first instance of a missing card glitch would happen in the release of Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition Stairway to the Destined Duel. Similarly, this missing card glitch was also a product of the developers removing cards for the release of this game. To give you a little bit of background, Worldwide Edition is actually a modified version of the title Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters 6 Expert 2, which was an OCG exclusive. And for the International Edition, Konami wanted to make a game that could bridge the TCG and the OCG for its yearly Worldwide Championship Tournament. And for this, they needed to remove a few cards that weren't quite available in every region in the world yet. They mostly removed all of them, however, there are a few cards that had their references left in the game upon the final release. We could recognize these as future promotional cards, structure deck exclusives, tins, and special edition packs. In fact, we wouldn't even get Electromagnetic Bagworm in the TCG until 2012, nine years later. But these specific cards got left in three packs total. The Purple Millennium Puzzle, the Red Millennium Puzzle, and the Challenge Cup Pack. And while it might seem as simple as receiving these cards when you're not supposed to, since their related data was also removed, this causes the game to randomly assign any card in the game to that slot in the pack that you open. However, this would also include four specific error cards that we can't normally obtain in the game. More specifically, the four monster card tokens that are summoned by the various card effects. You have a pretty rare chance to see these cards appear inside the packs, although you can't really obtain them as much as admire them because they will not end up getting added to your trunk. Even with the highest chance to get it in the Red Millennium pack, which has 4 out of the 45 cards missing, the actual chances of getting one of the tokens from the pool of over 1000 cards is extremely slim. And I remind you that this Red Millennium Pack is only available once every four weeks, so anything else from here, like the pack that you'll probably be picking most of the time, has an even lower chance of getting these cards. So yeah, these are basically like a shiny Pokemon in some instances and are really neat to see if you ever manage to get it during a real playthrough. The next glitch card would appear a couple years later in the title Yu-Gi-Oh! 7 Trials to Glory World Championship Tournament 2005. If you don't already know, this is a fantastic simulator and story style of game while also having the most broken glitch out of any Yu-Gi-Oh! game ever. This is the shop glitch. It famously writes data all over the place inside the ROM as a result of underflowing packs in Grandpa's card shop. You pretty much just walk in with 3000 DP, add 200k worth of cards to the cart, Grandpa will start checking you out, then proceed to go out of business and file bankruptcy. You will enter the matrix, and also we see Taya's feet up there, and after leaving the card shop, you are stuck, but after we reset the game, you will come to find out that most of the time when you do this, some of the deck lists in your personal data now has random cards placed in there. And when you look at these, they don't have any image or anything. And if we look at the details, now we can see we have a pretty messed up card with some very misplaced compressed graphics. And also there is the image that is used in the game on the decklist menu whenever there is no card for that slot. 
but these cards will only appear on this viewer, and if you try to go in and edit the deck list, you'll find out they are impossible to interact with. You can technically add more cards to this list in order to get up to the 40 card minimum, but Mokuba will stop you if you have more than 3 of a single card in your deck, which means that the only way to use a slot like this is to clear the whole deck. But if you manage to get a glitch seed that results in getting 3 or fewer of a glitch card in any one of the slots, then you can actually build a deck around that one and use these as you normally would in a duel. Once you get these cards in your hand, you'll be able to view the details again and see a new, slightly different, pretty still glitchy border. And you can actually look at the quick viewer this time by holding the L button, and as you can see, its text is still completely blank. The last thing you can do with it is either summon or set it on your side of the field to view a, another very corrupted card, this time with a rather interesting monster attribute in the corner. And as you can see, it's still the border of a normal monster card, so that is pretty interesting. And the last thing you can do with it is initiate battle in order to see its final form, which, for lack of a better term, is some garbled pixels. Although you won't be able to get much done with this card, as it's hard stuck at zero attack and defense, because you can't select it as a valid target for something like an equip card, so this isn't really a practical play, this is more of one of those psychological plays that you do in order to display dominance during a duel. So the shock glitch is a really easy way to set this up, but even without it, we would still be able to get this missing card to appear in this game. And that's because there's another oversight involving the card Smashing Ground. If you manage to activate this card while the only face-up monster your opponent controls has zero defense, then instead of hitting anything else, this will automatically destroy anything that's in your first monster card position, even if there's nothing there. But not only will it try to destroy what's ever there, it will also place that fantastic missing card in your opponent's graveyard. And if we look at it again, you can see it's our friend back again to show us some love. And there's actually a couple ways to interact with this while it's in your opponent's graveyard. You can either use Monster Reborn or Autonomous Action Unit in order to bring it back into play on your side of the field. And this time we get to see the lovely quote unquote was selected as the target. So yeah, this is definitely really cool and something I really enjoyed from this game, but you can even get this glitch to appear in another fantastic game called Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Duel Academy. You see, this same exact Smashing Ground glitch was also present in this game, and our best chances of getting it to appear is by Jaden, who has a copy of Spear Dragon, who notably has zero defense as its stats. Once we farm him for the right setup, we'll be able to use Smashing Ground, and just like last time, this is always going to hit the monster in our first monster card zone. Although as you can see now, the glitch card in the graveyard is a little bit more harder to interact with. If we try to scroll over it in the menu, then the cursor jumps and skips over it to the next thing, Cyberjar. Even with the help of Autonomous Action Unit, if we try to go find the monster in the graveyard, it will do that same exact thing where the cursor won't really allow us to select it, and basically skipping over it every time we try to select it, which is a little bit of a bummer. And the only thing we can really do is press L in order to view the quick viewer, which will reveal to us that this is actually the same exact missing card that was found in Seven Trials of Glory. And we know this because that missing card image is never found in this game. And while we can't special summon it from the graveyard, there is situations where you can get the opponent to special summon it from the graveyard because of the way the AI works, which he actually did in Summoned, although you can't really interact with it and it's basically treated as invisible and something that gets summoned in that slot will just replace it, but this is definitely something that they never saw coming for sure. 
But overall, we didn't get anything too crazy like being able to duplicate all of our items or maybe even cards in the trunk, but these games are distinctly different from the Pokemon games in that matter and a sort of missing card glitch. I guess the only thing that would have been really cool is to have some sort of billion attack, but who knows, maybe we can dream again for another day. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little Yu-Gi-Oh! glitch documentary. If you'd like to see some more wonderful jank in these games, be sure to show me some love in the comments and be sure to throw me a sub. And in the meantime, be sure to stay clean, scrubs.